Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to uh, my channel. I know it's been a while, I've owed y'all an update. I've had lots of folks asking if there was gonna be YouTube updates, so there's gonna be a new YouTube video. Uh, it's finally here, I've finally been able to scrape together some time to put together a video. So a lot's happened. Uh, have you seen in a previous episode, or not really episode, but a previous video, uh, the Frederick layout, the farm rail layout is gone. We moved out of that house uh, late in 2022. Uh, we finally got it sold in 2023. Um, and we added to our family in February of 2023, my, uh, my daughter Natalia was born. Uh, so we've been super busy and I knew we were going to be super busy and I didn't think I had time to embark. I mean, we're in this new house, also has a garage. I had all kinds of ideas. I, you know, what could I do? What could I build? And I had to temper my um, enthusiasm and, and set some realistic expectations. I've been extremely busy in my, uh, my career, and um, we have two very young kids. Uh, my wife is busy in her career. And so I knew I wanted to get trains running. I wanted to have a fun project. And I decided to go with a small project layout over, um, you know, a full, even full room size layout or getting really crazy with trying to put something in the garage. So this is it. This is uh, a kind of um, a, a second look at my East Pin theme and or East Pin uh, construction technique. I got a lot of really positive feedback. I mean, thousands of people uh, were huge fans of the East Pin layout when I was posting about that. And so what I decided to do was try to capitalize on all the good things I did with East Pin, but uh, revamp it, take some lessons learned, and make it better while exploring a new prototype. I've been really into the Southern Railway lately. And so what could I do to uh, model the Southern on something similar. And so as you can see, we still have the same Ikea bookshelves. It's the same one that East Penn sat on. I've got new bench work. And what I did this time is rather than doing the valiance with the lighting, I just recycled some lighting from the uh, Frederick layout. And that's just uh, screwed into the drywall, it's the same lights, they work really great. It's simplified construction. Um, and a couple other things that I wanted to do differently on this layout. So the track plan, as y'all will see, is very, very similar. I mean, we're talking about two turnouts, the two turnout layout, and it serves three industries, uh, most of them with multiple car spots. You've got an agricultural dealer, a uh, brick factory, a small brick factory, and a team track. Now, what I knew at this time is I didn't want to have to really fudge the switching lead. So in addition to the uh, eight foot layout, and this layout is per 18 inches deep by eight foot long, is I added the staging cassette. If it looks familiar, it's a staging cassette that was on uh, my farm rail Clinton Industrial Park layout several years ago. Kept on, hung on to it, came in handy, and it just sits on a shelf bracket screwed to the wall. Just painted the walls of the room blue. My my mother-in-law came, was in town helping with the baby and was gracious enough to spend an afternoon painting with me. And then yeah, it just sits nicely in the side of the room. This is our hobby room. Kind of zoom back out here for you all. So this is our hobby room. Uh, there's my modeling desk, which honestly hasn't gotten a lot of use this year. I've got a uh, cart there that's got rolling stock storage, books, magazines, all that. This is my wife's crafting desk and Lego desk, uh, which honestly has gotten more use than my model train stuff this year. It's where she builds Legos, she does crafting, does calligraphy, all her hobbies. And then I use some shelving from the dismantled Frederick layout just to store model kits, model supplies, more magazines, and then up top here, we've got some of my wife's Lego projects, little one's art, um, some trains I wanted to display, including O-Gage. I've kind of gotten into O-Gage lately. Um, so we'll talk more about that. And over here, a spot for my wife's craft plotter and more books and modeling supplies. So it's, I'm a neat freak. Y'all know that uh, the room is not perfect, but it is a it's a nice place to just sit and build models, to build Legos, to hang out. Um, we like to come up here with a, a beverage of choice and, and sit here in the, in the peace and quiet and listen to a podcast. She'll, I'll run trains. She'll work on a crafting project after the girls go to sleep. So that's really nice. And yeah, the layout just kind of 
it occupies its space in the room without taking it over. Uh, and you can get a good 15 minute, 20 minute operating session off of this. What I did for the backdrop is uh, just used a photo backdrop um, glued to some sheet styrene and then cut out. And then it's just used command hooks, the uh, Velcro removable um, adhesive just to hang it directly on the wall. And the bench work is a couple sections of Seaver's bench work, um, two sections, and then I put a three quarter inch plywood top on top of that, and then fascia, and then the plywood itself, once again, just like the East Pin layout, it's just sitting on top of those shelf legs. And so it's the plywood's actually holding up the weight of the layout. So yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. And so this is, the theme here is somewhere down south. It's supposed to be somewhere in, somewhere between Charlotte and uh, Star, North Carolina, you know, 78 to 81, 1978 to 1981, on the Southern Railway, probably somewhere on the former Norfolk Southern, the original Norfolk Southern system. And the idea is, is this is a former branch line uh, that is mostly abandoned, but where the train comes from, from the left there, is the original Norfolk Southern Main Line, which is essentially a branch line in itself. And so there's these industries still on this spur, former branch, that require service. So the local will just bring the cars in that are either in, that are inbound for this spur or this lead, will work these industries. And then in my imagination, beyond that track down there past the staging cassette is just abandoned. So you know, it does, the train doesn't go any further. It just comes in from the the left side of the layout and you can see the, uh, excuse me, my camera work here. Uh, you can see the trees and stuff. So it's kind of meant to make it look like the, the train is coming in from somewhere else. It does its work and works these industries. And then you just back it down towards where in my mind, the rest of the train is waiting on the, on the quote unquote main line. So I did that because you don't have to make up any excuses for where the train's going. I didn't, you know, Southern cabooses are hard to find, at least prototypical ones. I don't have a caboose yet. Uh, uh, hopefully tangent, we'll put one of those out eventually. Uh, but you just bring the cars in that need to be worked for these industries and then shove back whatever you have outbound. So it lends itself well. And you can see the track plan is very similar to the East Pin layout, but I wanted to go with more spot specific spots without having a massive factory because I wanted this to look rural. Um, the idea, what I I call it somewhere down south, is it is flexible with era and it's flexible with um, railroad. So I've run this as a seaboard coastline branch. Uh, I think it could even potentially be like a Rock Island branch in Arkansas. It could be the Frisco in Arkansas or Mississippi. Frisco, yeah, Frisco got to Mississippi. Uh, it could be East Texas potentially, um, maybe Eastern Oklahoma, maybe. Um, and so it's meant to be a little bit generic Southeast scenery, but it is rooted in rural North Carolina. Uh, I got a lot of um, inspiration from old photos of the Southern in North Carolina in, in 1979, 1980, 81. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, I've been expanding rolling stock to uh, to make this happen. And this locomotive and all almost all the cars you see here are uh, weathered by um, Rob Arsenal, Weather My Trains. I always enjoy doing business with him, and he just did a phenomenal job on this. Uh, he weathered the locomotive off of prototype photos, and we've got a lot of southern rolling stock, but also uh, some family lines. Aberdeen and Rockfish, which is a favorite of mine since they are uh, right down the street from my house here in Aberdeen. Um, so this has been a lot of fun. And so now I'll talk you through some of the industries here and how we do switching. So what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about how I have individual car spots in this layout. So even though it's only got two turnouts and uh, a couple of industries, you can still get a lot of switching action out of this. So I have an agricultural dealer on this, uh, this back track here, you have to be named. And one of the first car spots here is this fertilizer spot. And so you can see it, I'll move the car here. There's just an auger right here. Uh, fertilizer gets dumped into that uh, bin there and moved into the building. 
And so this can take one hopper car at a time, or you can have off-spot hopper cars that get moved around by a tractor or front-end loader, things like that, uh, between operating sessions, or even the crew might switch them out. So this is the first car spot for fertilizer and hopper cars. And then next up at the Ag Dealer, they've also got a old warehouse here that occasionally gets bagged fertilizer or feed in box cars. I don't switch this one super often because I'm modeling 78, 79, 80. Uh, there were still bagged feed and fertilizer, but it would have been more common in the uh, hopper car. But this does get switched out sometimes. And then back here in the corner, at the very end of that back track for the Ag Dealer, there's also a spot for liquid fertilizer. And you can unload one tank car at a time right there. And then the track kind of just disappears back into the brush and weeds and trees in there. Now on the foreground track, there's two industries. The busiest one is gonna be this small brick manufacturer. And I'm just suggesting this by having an industry in the aisle and having a concrete loading dock to load box cars with bricks. Now small brick industries like this were actually uh, fairly common in this part of North Carolina where I'm modeling. So it does work and Obviously there's a bigger plant in existence that we just don't see out in the aisle. And this can take two box cars at a time, but usually only gets one. And then the last industry I've got here uh, on this foreground track is a team track spot. And mostly I've been spotting these uh, coal hoppers there for some sort of local lumber yard or coal dealer that comes and unloads those with an auger into a truck. I'd like to add some more detail to this scene, add some coal dust and coal kind of spilled around there in the tracks as well as an auger for unloading. I just haven't got to that yet. Uh, in theory, you could put other kinds of cars here for the team track spot. Uh, I may do some more agricultural related things like lime uh, or phosphate, things like that from more fertilizer or um, maybe a box car even being loaded with a ramp. But right now I've just been doing these uh, coal hoppers there. But wait, there's more. Uh, I also have the ability in an operating session to simulate, because I have not built it yet, having a, uh, an auger here, a portable auger, to load grain hoppers, uh, maybe shipping corn or soybeans, things like that. Now this agricultural dealer mostly receives things, whether it's liquid fertilizer, bagged fertilizer feed, or fertilizer in the hopper cars. But I also wanted the ability for them to ship something. And so I'm gonna build a portable auger that they can use to load up to two or three, maybe uh, grain hoppers at a time. Right now I'm using these Southern uh, Big John hoppers for that. Once again, for corn, soybeans, things like that. Now the trick is to this is when they're loading these cars and you have to have the ability to move them around a little bit underneath the auger uh, or move the auger to every uh, bin is you can't have as many cars of fertilizer on the track. So it creates a little bit of a switching difficulty there as well. Yeah. Sasha, did you take my workbench? Yeah. What are you doing? Okay. You want to look at the trains? Yeah. I want to look at the trains now. So this scene here has uh, rapidly become my favorite scene on the layout. It's fairly simple. Uh, I got these backdrops from uh, trackside scenery. And what I did is I followed uh, Tim Garland's lead and how he did things on his Seaboard Central. Uh, I just put these on pieces of styrene and then cut out the... Uh, uh, the tops of the trees there so that I can just use a blue sky backdrop that's just the uh, painted drywall in this room. And I was skeptical. I hadn't really worked with photo backdrops before, but it actually works really well. Um, this uh, asphalt road here is um, uh, AK. Uh, it's their, their asphalt. Um, it's like an acrylic type goop, essentially, that you like, make a paved road. I just put that on top of some uh, cork. I'm still weathering it and playing it with the uh, the textures there and then I just kind of had a lot of fun with the scene added a lot of little details a lot of weeds and uh, grass mats and things like that the road crossing signs are from uh, small scale innovative uh, I didn't use any static grass I just use grass mats and tufts and things like that in this layout I wanted to try it out uh, there are some things to be said for it but I think if I was to go back and do it over again there would be patches where I would just use the traditional static grass applicator a lot of these structures have been recycled from old layouts. These uh, grain bins from Grain Belt Models uh, came from the Frederick layout. The, um, the switch stands there came from the Frederick layout. The railroad crossing, the cross bucks uh, came from the Frederick layout. I did get this house right here. Uh, when I started this layout, I had these intentions of, okay, I'm going to build a small layout, but maybe I'm going to really take my time to 
scratch build or kit bash or do some craftsman kits to really pour detail into it. I, I have been just devouring the work of Tom Johnson. <laughs> and what I quickly realized is I had even less time than I thought having two young kids and being really busy at work. Uh, and so I started to have to, in my mind, cut corners, um, which was unfortunate, but I, I wanted to at least get something finished and running. Um, so this building here is just a pre-built Woodland Scenics uh, house. I, I don't like a lot of those because they can kind of be a little bit, uh, I don't know the word, cutesy. They're, they're a little bit too much. Maybe they kind of work for the transition era, uh, but a lot of times there's too many like kind of fun, cute details in these buildings, in the old uh, storefront rows or the, the feed store or the local gas station. Uh, I think they just try to do too much, but I thought this house was simple enough that it works. It looks very, looks a little run down. It looks like something you see out in the rural South in this time period. Uh, and it works well enough and I was able to get something in that space. And because it's behind the train that's kind of back there towards the backdrop, it doesn't take a lot of attention, but it still had something beyond just the industries and the, the ground cover for the layout. So it's overall, it's worked out pretty well. And this is one of my favorite spots to, to photograph trains, to watch the trains is at this grade crossing. So I just think it's a lot of fun. Another thing I wanted to do was try Tom Johnson's technique of uh, getting grass and weeds growing it between the tracks. And uh, I, I had a chance to talk with him a little bit via Facebook and he was kind enough to give me some tips and tricks on how to do this. And so it's basically just these single strips of grass that you tuck down and pack into between the ties before you ballast. Um, and then the problem was, is I was using actual kind of more gritty ballast, uh, whereas he does a lot of sand. And so I did have a lot of trouble then brushing that out of some of the fibers. Um, but overall, I'm really impressed with this technique. It's something I'll do again. And I just had a lot of fun making this track look as worn down and uh, buried in the weeds as possible. And it, some of this pulled off better than others, but it, it was a lot of fun to try to make it overgrown and work with a lot of different greens. My Frederick layout was a little bit uh, you know, more burnt grass, not a lot of trees because it's Southwest Oklahoma. But here I, I had a lot of fun with all the different colors. And I think I went a little bit too crazy. I think some of the greens are a little too dark. Uh, it's not quite accurate for North Carolina, but it's working. So I've been adding a lot of these uh, home shops cars, these freelance cars to my layout. I got the Mesquite built there for my friend Devin Jackson. Uh, I got this Allagash car for uh, my Confluence Allagash Railroad. It's been a, just an inspiring layout. I really love this Cat Mountain and Santa Fe car, and this might get a GNBC grain belt patch and become a farm rail shuttle hopper at some point, uh, but it's doing fertilizer service in the layout. Uh, Tony Custer's layout, uh, just making an appearance as well. The Seaboard Central car, uh, which may also get weathered into um, frac sand or drilling drilling fluid service and farm rail. And then finally, this Cass County box car uh, from Tom Johnson's layout. These are a really fun way to just kind of uh, add a lot of creativity and, and support some awesome modeling efforts. And so they're, they're a lot of fun to have on the layout now. So uh, just to assuage any fears out there, the end of my Frederick layout didn't mean the end of my farm rail modeling, in fact, far from it. Uh, and so one addition to the farm rail roster that I'm really excited about is uh, green belt number 628 right here. Uh, this is a Atlas model that was already painted for Iowa Interstate, but I sent it off to Bradley DCC. Um, and he did the patch job on there and added the uh, decals as well for the front nose and then added some ditch lights, added a decoder programmed and everything, as well as gave it a light weathering to make this locomotive look like it would have appeared um, on farm rail back around 2015. And it's still on farm rail today, still working hard. Uh, sometime later, a small uh, GNBC reporting mark was added to the cab, um, but I'm modeling it in the uh, 2015 timeframe to better play with my uh, GP10s. And so I put with no reporting mark, just the number 
from his former Iowa Interstate engine. And it's really, really cool. Uh, it's phenomenal custom work. I'm super privileged to have on the layout. Uh, and so this is gonna look great on the next iteration of Farm Rail, uh, whenever that comes. But this is just a, such a cool addition to the, to the collection. So having a lot of fun with it. So the question is, is did I uh, accomplish what I set out to here? Uh, yes and no. I, I think I've got a place to run trains, which I'm very fortunate for. I'm very blessed to have. A lot of people don't. Uh, it's fun to come up here and switch for 15 minutes. Uh, honestly, I probably do it maybe maybe once a week, probably every two weeks. I come up here and run the layout. It's also great to have it for testing uh, new acquisitions in the collection, uh, things like that. Uh, it was fun to build some scenery, although sometimes it was it was stressful. It was, oh, I've got 30 minutes, I need to work on the layout because I want to finish it, and it wasn't as fun. Am I bored with it? Yeah. Uh, I definitely am kind of over just the back and forth switching. I want to see trains run. I definitely am ready to embark on a larger layout uh, when I have the time and space and everything. But I just can't stress enough that this is better than nothing. It doesn't have to check all the blocks. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be 100% happy with it. But um, to quote something a friend and I have been saying, run the damn trains. Like you, you need to, and that's uh, attribute that to his wife. That's not original me saying, but in, what we're saying is enjoy the hobby. Uh, find a way to enjoy the hobby. Find a way to get things running, to build some scenery, to, to have fun with it, as opposed to waiting for the perfect time. Uh, it, Time, life is busy right now, but it's it's so much more fun to have something to run trains on, even if it's not exactly what you would uh, what you would dream of or what's perfect. But it's it's a lot of fun to be able to run things, to to enjoy some switching, to to see things moving, and not just have things boxed up waiting on the perfect time or the perfect space. So in that regard, I think it's been successful. Uh, the design was hugely influenced by both. Tom Johnson's work that's been so prevalent with his Cass County, and then also Jack Hill with his one turnout um, module or kind of cameo layout he's been doing. Uh, th those were the two biggest design influences on this uh, this project. Uh, and I think I think it shines true. I'm trying to do something that's my own work and not just copying, but it was definitely heavily influenced. And I appreciate modelers out there in the space who are uh, sharing their work. Um, and I can't imagine the modelers out there we don't know about because they're they're not sharing it um, to each their own, but I think it's so cool when modelers are sharing what they're doing, 
They're posting either to social media or to a blog or to here to YouTube because it allows people to be inspired by what you're doing. So there were these guys, particularly Tom Johnson and uh, Jack Hill, who who really inspired me to get moving and get up and do something and something that I felt was attainable and something that I wanted to do as opposed to trying to just trying to fit farm rail in this space or uh, you know, I realized that Oklahoma wasn't going to fit in eight feet, but what I could do was something, another prototype I was really interested in and kind of take a side project for a little bit. So in that regard, I think this has been very, uh, very fruitful and a rewarding project.